Yo, what up? It's Aaron Moses, and this video is, well, I named it 11, it's really 13 ways to protect yourself from retrogrades. Now, everybody always comes to me, Aaron Moses, you know, Mercury, or when I talk to people, I'm like, what's going on? Aaron Moses, Mercury, is retrograde, I'm going crazy. Nah, bro. It's not about the retrograde, man. You just don't know how to protect yourself. And the first thing that I always tell people, if you're going to be about this spiritual life, psychic defense is a must. How to protect yourself from these retrogrades. Now, there's a lot of planets in retrograde. There's a considerable amount of planets in retrograde right now. Mercury's going into retrograde very soon. And it's going to be a full moon. And a lot of you people are going to be on that same wave. You're going to be in that same line of thinking. I'm going to give you some ways. Low key, it's kind of too late, but never say never, to protect yourself from this from this Mercury retrograde if you haven't been acti ah, actively doing this. So the first thing that I would tell you is to meditate on the planet that is going retrograde. Why is this important? This is important because you can have, you can build a rapport with these planets, with the planet that is going retrograde. Very important because this goes back to the law of attraction. Like attracts like, and the planet is not going to want to harm anything that is going to resonate with it. <clears throat> Pretty much... The only planet that you never, ever, ever have to worry about affecting you is the Jupiter retrograde. If Jupiter retrograde affects you negatively, nine times out of ten, you're not even from this planet anyway. So next, meditating on the constellation, as well as knowing what houses that these planets are going to be going retrograde in for you. Meditating on the constellation is going to, again, do pretty much the same thing as meditating on the planet, meditating on the constellation, Google the constellation, for example, Neptune, and meditating on the stars and how they form this constellation in your mind's eye. I mean, if you want to print it out or something like that, that's good too, but the universe is all up here. So next, meditating on the chakra that the planet controls. Of course, unless it's like the unless it's Pluto, Uranus, anything like that, those two planets aren't really gonna Neptune. Um, those planets aren't really gonna affect anything. But you can still see where these planets are in your natal chart and align them in a specific way that's gonna give you a an energy of protection. So next, invoking that planet's energy. How do you do this? You can chant the the planet. And the best languages for you to do, I like the Hindu language. I like doing it in Hindi, the Egyptian, um, pretty much anything but English. Because English is a pretty weak language as far as invoking energy. Yes, you can meditate earth, air, fire, water, earth, air, fire, water. But it's not a very old language, and it's a... It's a cluster of languages. So even Spanish will work better than English. Arabic, Hindi, like I said, the Egyptian language, um, Sumerian, if you can find that, anything pretty much but English. So chanting these planets and soaking your, taking the bed and these planets' energies. So next, offering. The day before or the day of, offer something to these planets meditating on them will give you the energy that you need to find out what is really good what's up everybody finding out what these planets like chocolate you know some planets like saturn may want you to do chores or do good deeds and help other people uh cleaning your house things like that can be used as offerings you know helping out your boss um Walking your dog more, treating your pets better, treating your loved ones better, taking your taking your people to Applebee's or something like that, smoking some Raggi. No, I'm just kidding. But next, packs. 
making a contract petition pact with these planets. When you do this, it is best combined with offerings. What this is, I have a video pretty much about this subject <clears throat> where I talk about trading your luck to Saturn for abundance. You can write packs, you can create packs with these planets in order and in, in order for you to be protected, asking them to protect you. Or when you invoke these energies, you can program the energy that you invoke. You can direct that energy to protect you from whatever negativity may come to you or that you're susceptible to. Next, one of the best ways to protect yourself from anything that's going to happen negative in your life because these retrogrades is education. That's actually number one. Not the number one, but I should have said that first. Education. Knowing how these planets may or may not affect you. Some of these planets, you're not supposed to uh, buy anything new. Some of these planets, you're not supposed to sign contracts, get knee surgery, random things like that. But if you know what to do and what not to do during these retrogrades, that is pretty much going to make sure that none, none of these things happen. So next, <laughs> run. Living in Chicago for years, I've learned, I've mastered the art of the, of the race, the sprint. You know, I got jumped when I was 16 and my cousin ran. And when I went back to his house, cause I was staying at his house, his dad was like, bro, why didn't you run? He ran. And I was like, because I didn't need, first of all, I didn't even know he ran. Second of all, because it just didn't feel right. And he said, you know what? Being a man is knowing how to pick your battles, knowing when to hold them, knowing when to fold them. So it's okay if you stay in the house. I stay in Chicago right now. These full moons, these crazy transits, the eclipse. Oh, no. Aaron Moses was posted. You can run. You can stay at home. Being bored is, 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 is it's okay. It's okay. You don't have to go outside. You don't have to prove yourself every day. Some of you guys like to do that. You want to go to these carnivals and festivals and concerts doing these retrogrades. Bad things happen. Your car gets towed. You lose your wallet. Stay at home. It's okay. All right. So, I mean, a part of that is also next. Doing what needs to be done before the retrograde comes. If you know that you're not supposed to be buying a car or doing anything huge, signing any contracts, spending a specific amount of money during these retrogrades, do it before the retrograde even comes, taking that gamble, putting in those extra hours and putting yourself in harm's way so you can get done what needs to be done before these retrogrades. Where's my shirt? What shirt? I was born like this. When I was born, I had a little baby I ran a hat on. <laughs> All right. Oh, the number. Next, visualizing yourself doing these things that you're not supposed to be doing during these retrogrades. For example, Mercury retrograde, technology and travels are jacked up during Mercury retrogrades. Visualizing yourself going on road trips, visualizing yourself buying a new iPhone and using it visualizing yourself programming your calendar and doing things with these devices doing things that you're not supposed to be doing during the retrograde and you executing them successfully easy all right so next this is something actually i'm gonna say that i'm gonna, I'm gonna say that for later next is working with the opposing energies and mercury if if we'll say mars if Mars is going in retrograde, you invoking Venus is going to be successful. It's going to be something that is going to protect you because it's going to offset the negativity or the or the detrimental energies that are going to come into your life. When we, I mean, as far as you educating yourself, you do have to learn. I advise everybody to learn the scientific factors that go into retrogrades. During a retrograde, 
the light that is being reflected off of the planet that is coming to you and coming to our planet is a different color than it usually is. I believe the lights are green. When planets are not in retrograde, the beams that are coming to us are green. When they go retrograde, the planets are shooting a red light towards us. So even if you want to use the color green, even if you want to invoke the planet's energy and protect yourself with a green shield or a green aura, that is going to it's going to complement the lights that are being shined onto you from that planet. So things like that. But I mean, specific planets, there's not, well, all the planets have, have opposite energies. All the planets have opposite energies. So you need to be able to learn how to invoke these energies and use them to protect yourself with programming. And that's basic magic, raising the energy, programming the energy, directing the energy. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but using that, using that knowledge. Next, number 12, using the magic squares. The magic squares are really very, very useful. And this is a way for you to invoke the energies of these planets easily, very easily. And that's one of the, that's one of the highest versions of planetary work. And you have to look up, you have to do a little bit of research on <clears throat> where these planets are supposed to be when you do these magical squares, you have to know the planetary hours. You can download a, uh, an app called uh, Kronos. I think it's called Kronos XP. Share this video if you want a free reading. I should have said that a long time ago. Share this video if you think I should go live tomorrow. But the planetary, the magical squares, the planetary squares are very complex. They, you, the planet has to be in a specific place. For example, from Mars, Mars has to be in Aries, Capricorn, and I think, I forgot, I think Sagittarius, but they're very specific though. And even moon, the moon is the worst because it has to be a full moon and it has to be in one of the water signs and it's all crazy, it has to be at night, it's crazy. So doing research on the magical squares and learning how to use those, if you get at least halfway through, which Mercury and Venus are long. Venus is like 48 days. Mercury is like 50 something days. So learning how to use these magical squares. Mars is like 16. Saturn's only nine days. Jupiter is like um, 11 or something like that. But the magical squares are very useful for you protecting yourself. Lastly, the biggest way <laughs> the biggest way to protect yourself from these retrogrades, don't care. Don't acknowledge them. It's just like karma. A lot of things happen to people because they think they're going to happen. Karma exists only to the person who thinks about it. If you give it thought, you give it power. Nothing ever happens to me during the retrogrades because I don't give a fuck. I don't care what, that's why I don't know when these retrogrades are gonna go. I don't pay attention to it. That's stupid. That's setting yourself up for the biggest L in life. Why are you worried about these retrogrades? I know when they're gonna happen, but me not knowing what's gonna happen, me not knowing how these retrogrades are gonna affect me, it's not about what's gonna affect me, it's about how I'm gonna respond to it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't freaking matter, okay? If you think about it, oh, it's going to happen. Oh, it's going to happen. Karma? I don't believe in karma. Do I Do I know for a fact that, it, that, that, that it's existing? Do I know that it's going to affect me? It's never going to affect me. People ask me all the time, how do you do all these, how do you do all these revenge spells and all this magic and, and, and nothing happens to you? Aren't you worried anything's going to happen to you? No. Because I don't believe in the, in the, in the threefold law. I don't believe in specific things and nothing bad happens to me. That's wisdom. Karma is not going to affect you. Retrogrades aren't going to affect you. You can do anything you want. 
It's not going to affect you. Anything at all. Anything. If you don't believe in it, it's not there. This is why people do crazy things. Because when you take away people's acknowledgement, they, they feel like they're going to die. Because they are. If you ignore people, they die. They die in your world. All the people in, in, in life who don't go thinking about all of the starving little kids in Africa because they're already dead to them. They don't care about them. They do not exist. So if you don't care about what's going on in the retrograde and the stars and the planets, if you never knew, if you never knew what a retrograde was, if you didn't think that any outside energies that have absolutely nothing to do with you were going to affect you, they wouldn't. If you were just living in the woods somewhere and you didn't have the internet, your life would be good. Nothing ever would happen to you bad. It's not my theory. This is facts. This is facts. Okay. The number one way for the retrograde to not affect you is to stop believing that outside energies are going to affect you. That you can totally, number one, control if you had to, and you can shut them off. Easy. Easy, squeezy, the lemon, as well as the peas. All right? But that's it. I hope everybody was blessed because you are certainly a blessing to me. It's Ann Moses of Life is in the Breath. Breathing in. Peace.